You know, there's something absolutely intriguing whenever a game decides to kind of stray away from the norm and do something completely weird and random. Uh, and I kind of wanted to do this emphasis for this video, both because uh, I didn't really get to work on an actual video that I wanted to make, like one of the perfectly designed series one. And secondly, because I have been hooked to this concept that I'm going to talk about this past week. And you can blame this on the reason why I didn't really work on a video uh, that was more in depth. So here's me probably rambling a bit more weirdly than usual. But I want to talk about moments when the gacha games that we have received as of recently, mainly focusing on Genshin and Honkai Star Rail, and I kind of want to talk a little bit about Withering Ways and Sunless Zone Zero. But moments when these games don't feel like the game that they're meant to be. And I say this because they just released like an event or some sort of like mini game that makes you take a rest from the whole combat system, but enables you to just continue playing even though you're not doing the normal thing that you should be doing. Even though, like for example, in Genshin, I'm no longer going out of my way to hunt Halo Trolls. I'm just playing hide and seek because Wind Trace was incredibly fun. Uh, in Honkai Star Rail, I'm not beating the hell out of Apocalyptic Shadow or one of the Golden Gears achievements that I haven't obtained yet. Uh, instead, here I am playing Origami Birds because this whole... Bejeweled Candy Crush like concept has been addicting to me, especially making it PvP, like the concepts of freaking Team Fight Tactics slash Hearthstone Battlegrounds. They they made it in a formula that just like got me hooked, right? So I just adore the fact that this has been something that I have been able to play, even though I know that I'm like struggling to speak, but like genuinely genuinely this has been incredible and i feel like moments like these when i have not actually worked in a video are moments that i kind of want to talk about because i it just shows that i want to give appreciation to these types of video games right now this is the reason why this video is this video uh, instead of the perfectly designed series that I was trying to script, but I failed because I got hooked on the bird game and something else that I'm going to talk about a little bit later. But yeah, with all that being said, let us see moments when uh, Honkai Star Rail Genshin, etc. gacha games decided to not be the gacha game. All right, so I think it would be most appropriate if I start talking about the origami birds and why I personally just enjoy them a lot, especially because it is what we have currently as the background for this, like, essential video. And I'm not gonna lie, I remember I saw this in the freaking trailer for, like, the next patch incoming. I was like, I saw, like, the essentially the patch notes, right? It's like, everybody's talking, like, ooh, you know, Candy Crush, Candy Crush. We get to play with, like, the origami birds, etc., etc. And I'm like, oh, like, that seems cool. I don't think I'm going to be that invested. Uh, and now here I am making a video about them. <laughs> uh, no, genuinely speaking, it grabbed me by surprise, but I think it's also because, it like, the Honkai Star Rail developers implemented a good amount of features into this game that made it that much more enjoyable such as the pvp aspect of it, especially with the fact that they kind of used the gimmick of team fight tactics auto chess hearthstone battlegrounds these are games that personally speaking i have been very addicted to in the past Mostly Hearthstone Battlegrounds because I'm a degenerate. So being able to have this sort of competitiveness against other players has driven me to want to play this game even further. And even more so as of recently because I unlocked Forbidden Knowledge. Uh, someone told me that 
the screen does not change like between rounds so whatever power-ups you created in the previous round will still be there in the next one and i was like wait really and suddenly i just became more obsessed on this game because i was like "Ooh, now suddenly it's not luck it's skill issue whenever i lose and thus my competitive nature bursted into existence and i decided to spend probably a lot more time than i would like to admit in this bird mini game they also just i don't know i like the fact that we can emote even though throughout this video i don't emote but i just find it very funny i wish you could edit those and it kind of reminds me of my time when i used to play legends of runeterra that <laughs> those were memories that I'm not sure if I look at fond of or if I look at them with despair because I also struggled a lot in that game. It was fun, but I also struggled a lot, especially against aggro decks. Um, I'm getting way off topic. I do like the fact that this is something that has been available for a limited amount of time into the game. And I want to emphasize that I fully support and I enjoy the fact that this game mode will only be limited. And it might feel controversial because you're probably asking, Manny, hold on, if this game mode is something that you have been adoring and that you've been enjoying a lot, why would you rather it be like temporary rather than permanent? So for that, let me explain. It's essentially the reason as to why more, most of the games that I play kind of like wish the same for. And it's the fact like I, an example for this could be the Genshin TCG. I enjoyed it a lot. I invested a good amount of time on it. It was a lot of fun and then it became stale and I had no reason to go back into it. And eventually you just either play against other people that are going like incredibly try hard people that are just going for achievements, or nobody. You just stand on the queue for hours on end because nobody is playing the game, especially not at the time that you're playing. And that can easily make the experience become a lot more stale. Uh, I know that the Genshin TCG has improved a lot, mind you. I do kind of want to talk a little bit about that later down in this video, if possible. But... Yeah, I don't know, I just, there's something about the fact that a game can easily become stale and then like other players that would be fun to actually play with would just be gone. And it's when it kind of just loses its charm. It's cool getting people to do chaotic things together. So while I'm going to miss this game when it goes away in like, I think like 21 days, I do encourage for it to go away and then return in the future. And this is the same case for a game mode that I have been adoring so much that I was missing <laughs> way too much that is part of Genshin Impact, and that is Wintrace. I want to mention Wintrace specifically because it was the game that I probably have sunk way more time than I should have uh, when I was playing a lot of Genshin. And I say this because some of my initial content uh, in some videos that might just be gone into the abyss uh, all the way in like YouTube shorts slash some TikToks. If you go to like the very depths of it, you will see uh, a few couple of videos that I recorded of me playing Wintrace that I enjoyed. I remember I, I even uploaded some on them off, on Reddit because I was like, ooh, Wintrace Gaming. <laughs> I, I was having a lot of fun just cheating the game or just being a menace because it's enjoyable to just do these random wacky things in the game. So when I went away, I was upset. But then I learned something, you know, like the, the longer the minigame there was still remaining, the less 
fun it was becoming, especially when it was like a few days before it was over. Like the last day was a lot of fun because a lot of people were like playing it for one last time and they wanted to have like the joy of it. But I like a few days before that, when there were like four or five days before the game actually went away, it became dull because either you were waiting in like somewhat long queues or people were disconnecting. There were people that were just like there for like, I don't know, they just weren't taking it seriously per se. So it just made the game would be just dull. And that is not to say that there weren't any like enjoyable matches. There were, but it feels like the quality dwindles down when there's less people to play with. So, overall, I really wish that there were more ways for us to be able to enjoy this. I, I encourage the creation of more of these game modes and for them to, like, rotate, come in and out, not super frequently, but, like, to a certain extent. And, yeah, overall, I just was very happy when Genshin brought back Wind Trace this time around. I, like... I was happy it was back. I was a bit upset. It was no longer a prop hunt. It was more like freaking Dead by Daylight. Like, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't the winch race that I wanted to play, if that makes sense. <laughs> so, overall, I want to say that, like, I don't know. I'm, like, struggling to find a way to, like, say what I'm trying to say. Again, this is not, like, scripted at all, so it... It is a struggle, but I'm just glad that I was that I'm able to play them. I'm glad that I'm able to invite friends or just get invited to matches or just playing against randoms. It's what makes the game memorable, doing silly little things with other people in environments you normally wouldn't be used to. And this kind of brings me to another one. Of the things that I... Like another one of the games that I really enjoyed that they implemented. And this is not a PvP one. And again, I have examples for this in Genshin and in Staryl. And they will be the next one we're talking about. Okay, so for this next, like, mini game, quote-unquote. It's actually a bundle of three different ones. And... It is the Vine Lace Fest event in Genshin Impact, the Potion Seller event in Genshin Impact. I don't remember what it was called, but it was like Alchemy Ascension or something like that. And we had the last mini game, which is from Honkai Star, which is the whole Aurum Alley event. And the reason why I personally loved all of these is because it reworked the concept of the game. For some reason, I was playing Genshin and suddenly I was like, oh, right, I'm on my daily missions, I kind of have engraved in my mind, let me go, sh let me go check on my shop. <laughs> I need to see how my shop is doing. And therefore, I was having fun because I was playing not Genshin within Genshin. I was playing not Star Real within Star Real. I had moments to take breaks from the game and keeping it from becoming dull to me within the game itself. And for some reason, I don't know, I just feel like that is important, especially with events. Like, mind you, combat events are fun. Uh, especially in Star Rail, I feel like combat events in Star Rail have been, like, illegally fun. Because I didn't think I would be enjoying them as much as I have. But beyond that, I much prefer other games that are not combat events. And this was more true within Genshin. In Genshin, combat events have become dead to me. E except for, well, like, the iridescent theater. I forgot what, like, the, the, new, the new game mode is called. New endgame content. The new theater game is insanely fun because I am a maniac. I like to do challenge runs. And that essentially is a whole challenge run of its own. Because it's like, hey, you're not allowed to use this element of character. Screw you. And I'm like, well, I thank you. You're just making it that much more interesting for me. 
I may not be good at the game, but I will enjoy taking on this challenge. Um, so I don't know, just having those like merchant events has been a good change of pace in comparison to what would be normal gameplay. You know, I don't have to be doing Memory of Chaos. I don't have to be doing Golden Gears. And to a certain extent, I was going to say Diverging Universe. But this time around, and I know that many people have been telling me that they hate how some concepts of Diverging Universe have been annoying. And I can, unperf I can perfectly understand that, right? Diverging Universe in Threshold 6 is not for everyone. And that's not to say that, oh, like, you know, like, just get good. No, like, this game mode is unfair in many ways. But I kind of just looked at it from the perspective of someone that plays a lot of roguelikes. I've played, I've played a lot more hours than I would like to admit on games such as Hades, Slate Aspire, The Binding of Isaac. I have been used to getting screwed over by RNG. So whenever that happens in Divergent Universe, I'm just like, yeah, no, this is gonna happen. I'm just gonna adapt. I get to have my whole party members, like, whenever I want. So it's not really the worst um, possibility that could happen. I have, like, the tools available to get... Well, I should have the tools available to get out of these predicaments. So overall, it's something that uh, just makes me happy. For as weird as it is, like, yes, like, me saying, oh, yeah, like, this game mode is incredibly hard for no reason other than just screw you, gamer, uh, try to do your best is what I enjoy in this game. <laughs> uh, that being said, I, you know, like I said, like, there's the fact that, like, the, I'm, I don't know how I, like, got diverted so much. I'm, like, I was talking about the freaking potion selling events right the whole like market event and then here i am talking about end game content for no reason <laughs> but uh I don't know. there's just like it's just nice when they give us content that isn't either normal or easy and i kind of consider it its own little mini game as a whole and I'm, I'm pretty sure that, like, this part has been incredibly confusing. And I'm sorry. I know that, like, many of you guys are probably like, what the fuck is this guy smoking? There's my F-bomb of the video, I guess. I've been, I, I, I've been trying my best not to swear as much. Uh, but again, this time it's not scripted. So I'm just kind of all over the place. Genuinely, though. Like, uh, moral of the story is, I like it when the game is not the game. I like it when I can to do random silly little things and that actually kind of makes me move forward to a little bit of conversation that i wanted to have about sunless zone zero which is actually the gameplay that we have in the background yes this weird mini game that we have in the background where i literally just died um <laughs> is actually from sunless zone zero it's because they have an arcade machine where you can just play either snake or pvp snake <laughs> as well as like this on, on, there's also like a co version of this right or like this like dog con like dog going down mini game i haven't tried the co version but i've been playing this one way more than i would like to admit as a matter of fact i reached at some point um rating 34 so i was like the top 34 player in the north american server now i'm like top 61 which is still pretty high. I wish I was in the top 50, but like still pretty high. And I genuinely do adore it. At some point, I will go back into this game and try to beat my high score. I think my current high score at the moment that I'm recording this video is of 1,161. So if you want to get ahead of me, uh, that's like your score to beat. Go to the depth. Go to 1,161 meters below the starting point And just... Tell me you're a better gamer than me, because that clearly is what you are at that point. Um, yeah, I don't know, just, I'm like rambling on too much, but there, there's, it feels weird, because again, I have been adoring Zenless Zone Zero, not because of Zenless Zone Zero, but because of Soul Hound Street. And I wanted to make a video to talk about that, just like, hey, like, you all should play these things more often, because 
it's nice to just for absolutely no reason have mini games within your game. And while I know that this game is gonna become dead within like I don't know like the next month, because right now you know this little mini game is new. Everybody's gonna play it. Eventually, it's gonna become a dead game. Same for like the co-op snakes. Unless I can see streamers playing alongside each other, that is a lot of fun, especially because it's like a four-player mini game. But beyond that, I don't really see many people actually, you know doing these mini games if they were to be like permanent uh in the case of this of some of zero these are permanent so again like eventually this is just gonna die down nobody's gonna play it and i'm gonna feel very sad because i do like these games and i know that i say that i'm gonna be sad because people are not gonna play the game anymore but neither am i and i'm gonna be completely honest about that that still no, again I, I need more of this i need more limited time events where i'm just being silly and dying for the dumbest possible reasons. Oh, never mind. My actual score is 1,181. So that's your score to be. Um, but yeah, uh, essentially, I don't know. I just wanted to, to ramble on about this game for just the sake of mini games are fun. I need more of them. Uh, I'm sorry that I didn't actually make a video <laughs> that I was meant to do this week, though. Since Jade is going to be releasing next week, I'm going to be compiling everything I can about Jade. Uh, because I do want to have a video on her, especially with how horrifying she is as a character. Uh, I am scared. Just snakes are not a, a thing I like. <laughs> so the whole whip becoming a freaking snake was a cool detail. And there's so much more that I'm not going to go in depth right now but like the, i have found a lot of things that i want to mention about the jade and that i will probably have to expand further in future videos uh so yeah with all that being said thank you very much for watching uh, i hope this rant not it's not really rant it's just like thank you for coming to my tech talk i've just been like rambling on for perhaps way too long but i hope that you've enjoyed me saying nonsense for a whole i don't know how long has this been probably over 25 minutes and uh, yeah if you enjoy this sort of content where i'm just spewing random nonsense feel free to subscribe hey it's free it only takes a second and if you ever feel like you know this is not the sort of content for you you're more than welcome to unsubscribe you can always change your mind right it's just as quick only takes a second so with all that being said done Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. In the next proper video. Bye.